Hi, thanks for coming to our session on increasing the value of video content in B2B marketing. I'm Bruce McKenzie, the guy who, along with my business partner, Lorna Pauska, came up with the idea for explainer videos in 2003. We were doing our own business development, seeing a lot of announcements in the business press about new tech solutions, and when you try to get more information about uh, a particular solution, you come to a page like this. Uh, Tipco was an early customer of ours. I got this page out of the Wayback Machine. Uh, and you look at it and say, well, who's going to read this stuff? Uh, and we had to been, de been developing presentations using Flash, so we would call up the product manager and suggest that uh, you know maybe a nice little Flash animation would um, work for them, and, the, uh, and they, they did, and the idea caught on and turned out to have quite a few uses um, beyond just uh, being on the front page of the, the website or the product page. But being on the at the top of the funnel, uh, so to speak, isn't really the only way that video can provide value to marketers or to their customers, and that's what I want to talk about. Where does video add the most value? Uh, I think it delivers the most value when it's giving your customer the pleasure that comes from understanding something they didn't understand a minute ago. Uh, and there are a lot of different ways to do this. I mean, typically, or most obviously, I guess, uh, this is a video that I have to watch every year because my car is useless in the snow and we don't get that much snow. Um, so I need to remember how to put these um, snow chains on. Reach around the side of the tire and grasp both ends of the non-split side cable that is furthest away from you. Pull both. I love the way that guy talks. Anyway, what I like about this video besides that is it's very visual and it's very practical and it makes me feel confident that uh, I'm going to be able to handle this year's snow. Here's how it works is my favorite sentence to write in a script because it's not promotional in our niche, which is um, technology solution videos. People don't like to be marketed to. Uh, but when you hear, here's how it works, it feels like, oh good, I'm going to learn something. So let's learn something about hybrid storage. Our unique Q-tier technology analyzes data access patterns in real time to see which data is being accessed right now and needs to be in fast storage. It makes sure the hottest data is on the fastest storage and the less used data is on less costly hard drives, making adjustments every five seconds. Other hybrid storage arrays only move the hot data every 24 hours. Visual concepts. If you can't tell what a video is about with the sound off, then your creative team really hasn't made the most of their graphical resources. So um, this, this example doesn't have any narration at all. Uh, it's for a fairly technical product. It's about densifying virtual machine placement in a data center. Now, whether, it, whether or not you think densifying is a thing, you can at least learn the definition very fast from a visual. Video is really great for helping a viewer get an idea of how a piece of software works and get the point quickly. With one click, they can drill down to the root cause. Zero time spent trying to reproduce the problem, lightning fast resolution. That is quick, right? Step-by-step um, uh, -step processes and methodologies. Services and consulting are often not visual, they're conceptual, and they're hard to differentiate. But you can convey a sense of order and the kind of work that's going to get done pretty quickly in a video. To rationalize your application portfolio, we conduct a half-day workshop with your team. Then, apply CA portfolio analysis tools with expert cloud consulting services to determine the most suitable candidate for cloud services. Finally, use cases. Use cases are important when you're trying to persuade people they need to change the way they're doing things now. This video is about the concept of customer experience networks, the idea that important customer communications about your product occur in channels that you don't control. And our client, Axway, can help you with that. 
So here's a couple of use cases explained very quickly. Healthcare consumers use channels far removed from any individual service provider's IT systems. Same with the automobile owner. Most of the time, we're not selling the solution. We're selling what it can do for people. That's a good reason to use characters in your video. The human form always draws the eye. Even corporate empty suits can help you follow an argument. I, I like characters to dramatize the problem and the solution, not just talk. The idea is to have the viewer recognize a human situation without the narrator having to go on at length about it. Characters can bring numbers to life. They provide scale. They don't actually need to move to add motion, though it's better if they do. These blobs embody a concept, binary large objects. These guys help bring some specificity to the boring concept of dashboards. These guys are from a heartwarming story about a high-tech wood stove. You can get characters from stock footage, too. But animation software has come a long way, and a big advantage to animated characters is that they work cheap, and they'll do exactly what you want them to do. B2B buyers are looking for information and insight. In other words, they're out to learn something, not to be marketed to. So B2B marketing content needs to educate and engage people. Bill Butler is a well-known expert on B2B sales strategy. He headed up sales at one of the first companies to use two-minute explainer videos. Now he's CEO of Journey Sales and still an advocate of two-minute explainer videos. As you can tell from this quote, Bill believes that consumer companies recognize that they're in the education business, B2B not so much. I believe that too, and for the past year or so I've been dipping into e-learning blogs and publications. E-learning uses a lot of video, of course. I've been looking at e-learning best practices that might apply to what we do. This is the age of bite-sized learning, according to a lot of e-learning pundits. The problem isn't just short attention spans and more competition for people's attention. It's also that everyone's attention ebbs and flows. So you deliver education in chunks, sort of like how software developers deliver applications. We were already delivering information in small chunks, two minutes, uh, but now we're trying to make them even smaller. Two Minute Explainer is a cool brand, but people's attention spans are getting shorter. This example we made for Bill Butler's current company, Journey Sales. Their solution is called Smart Rooms. These are microsites. They use Salesforce platform and they use Salesforce activity data for analytics. It's kind of complicated to explain. Uh, here's how we explained it in one minute. Customers want new ideas and insight all the time. On the customer's journey, will your sales process deliver? When your sales team uses Salesforce to share smart rooms with customers, you deliver a personalized 24-7 online experience built around your content and messages and other content you know they want. Better yet, smart rooms make it amazingly easy for your sales team to collaborate with the customer's team. They'll get real-time notifications whenever customers are engaging in the smart room. Smart rooms let you reach across accounts, get everyone around the table online, build consensus, and make decisions. Creating smart rooms from pre-built product and industry templates is a snap. With analytics from smart rooms, you can measure individual and collective activities and track overall engagement. Use smart rooms for account-based selling opportunities, to acquire new customers, cross-sell and upsell, or sell with channel partners. Improve engagement, increase revenue with Smart Rooms by Journey Sales, all in Salesforce. Here's where to learn more. Another e-learning best practice I found interesting was the idea of reducing or optimizing the cognitive load. Uh, cognitive load is, consists of the intrinsic load, that is the complexity of the information itself that you're trying to uh, get the person to learn. 
Any decorative elements become part of the load that's called extraneous load. And examples and exercises that assist in information processing, that's called the germane load. All that uh, adds up to the work the brain has to do in order to learn something. Here's an example of a video where we deliberately tried to minimize the cognitive load because the subject, microservices, is quite complex. We reduced the decorative elements to bare minimum, and then we finished up with a couple practical examples of how microservices are used. What are microservices? They are independent services with just a few, typically no more than six, simple, data-driven inputs and outputs. Each microservice contains everything necessary, business logic, rules, database logic, user interfaces, persistence, to perform a single business function well. A microservice that transfers funds can be used by many applications. The same is true for shipping items, opening accounts, invoicing customers, and innumerable other functions. Microservice Another e-learning insight that I found interesting was that what we see and what we hear are processed by different systems in the brain. So it doesn't necessarily help if you repeat words spoken with words typed out on the screen. It definitely doesn't help if you're hearing one thing and seeing something not at all related. And it takes skill to strike the right balance. So here's an example where we're trying to make the viewer think without putting too much stress on either channel. The video is about a service that retrieves and consolidates information from Securities and Exchange Commission filings. It's the only video we've ever made that uses the phrase indebtedness covenants. Negotiating the fine points of a deal, like indebtedness covenants, you can instantly analyze what the other side's lawyers claim they do against what they've actually done for other clients. That looks like something a lawyer would say. Need I continue? So those videos were all made by professionals, and the question sometimes comes up, do I need to hire a professional? The answer is no, not always. But what you want is editorial agility. I heard an interesting podcast uh, with Thelma Schoonmaker, who has edited all of Martin Scorsese's films for the last 40 years. She said something pretty cool. She said, Marty doesn't make violent movies. I make them violent. She's best known for editorial techniques like this elegant thing called a flashbulb cut. One of the really interesting things she said was they assembled 12 different edits of the whole movie to get the best one. And that's the main skill you're paying for when you hire a professional. It's the ability to look at a lot of disparate elements and quickly come up with 12 or at least a lot of different ways of putting the words and the moving pictures together to make the most impact. People always ask us, what is your process? And it's similar to any professional production company you'd work with. I can walk you through the steps pretty fast. We do our homework by collecting published stuff from the website, product sheets, and so forth. We watch webinars and videos. We look at people's sales decks. Uh, and we usually talk through those sales decks with subject matter experts because messaging documents never contain any anecdotes. And there's a lot of value in talking to people and developing a script for a, a technology video so you get the language right. You want to talk to people who actually talk to customers and will tell you stories you can, you can structure the video around. Our scripts look like this with a description of the visuals in the left column and the words that are going to be spoken by the narrator in the right. It functions kind of like a screenplay. From the script you move to storyboards, which we do in Google Slides, which makes it easy to collect comments. In order to keep things fluid, we put together the video from the storyboards with a temporary narration. Most of our videos are technical. We don't like to lock down the graphics until we're pretty close to the end of the process. We share the video on a platform where we can collect feedback so clients can see how the words and moving pictures come together. We work with a client to select a narrator. We supervise the voiceover uh, recording, either in a studio or more frequently via Skype. Um, we wrote it. We know what it's supposed to sound like. The last thing we do is add the music. Now the question comes up, where are you going to deploy this video? And I don't mean deploying in a distribution platform like 
Vidyard, I mean deploying it so your video is going to create some engagement. This customer lifecycle model is by Hank Barnes at Gartner. It shows streams of activity which are going to involve different people at different times. It's a model of increasing engagement that is uh, up to and beyond the first purchase. That makes it relevant to account-based marketing, which is particularly important for tech companies who are relying increasingly on subscription models for their solution sales. So let's talk about the customer experience of this buying team. When you're producing a video, it's easy to forget that you're not dealing with a TV audience. You're talking to individuals, and they have different interests and different expertise. What's, what's top of mind for one may well be something the other people never heard of. And, and it's also a good idea to keep in mind that don't really have a lot of time to spare. In account-based marketing, the persona landing page is becoming the norm. This is where the value of editorial agility really comes out because you can use some of the same graphics and ideas to speak to different interests. Uh, from our point of view, that's good because we've always learned more than two minutes worth uh, about any subject we're making a video about, so it's pretty easy to come up with different ways of doing things. And this series of videos it was directed not at role-based personas so much as the interests of specific departments in an organization. Uh, the product is an enterprise service management solution that's uh, it's cloud-based software used to run help desks and provision computer resources that's been repurposed for other kinds of services. You can eliminate huge chunks of this inefficiency by turning routine financial functions into services provided through service desks and self-service catalogs, just like in IT. It's easy to extend Axios's industry-leading IT service management platform to support finance with built-in templates, data governance, and security. So that's the example for the finance department. Now let's see how that transfers to the facilities and security group, that is, these are the people who provide equipment, furniture, access control, that kind of thing. But it's not a lot of work to turn all this into catalogs for self-service. Or to automate these tasks, you just extend Axios's industry-leading IT service management platform, Assist, with built-in templates for facilities and asset management and security services. And for HR services. What do HR services have in common with IT services? Same customers, same channels. Now, people expect things to be easy. Axios Assist Service Management Platform can make it easy to make things easy. You can quickly shape it to automate your operations, cutting down on system maintenance and manual steps. As you can see, it's the same thing but different all the way through, and that's why these kinds of persona-based videos are efficient to make, and they're only a minute or so long, which is good for the viewer. Nothing's more important to your brand than your people. That's why subject matter expert videos add a lot of value. They come across as the opposite of promotional. They're informal, they're ad hoc, they've got personality and enthusiasm. Talking heads can get boring, but it's easy to edit in graphics and they can add a lot of value. Do-it-yourself subject matter expert videos are getting easier to make all the time. This slide shows a simple Chrome extension that Vidyard put out. Um, here we've got a SME talking in the little circle down here about a technical diagram and all you need to do is put the diagram up on the screen and record the thing. Video FAQs are something you see more in consumer marketing than you do in B2B, like the video about my snow chains. But if a question can best be answered with a visual, it should be. I don't know why more B2B companies don't do this. I said earlier, I think editorial agility is the key to customer engagement and getting the most from your video budget. 
So let's talk about editorial agility applied to this customer buying team and think about things from the customer or prospect's point of view. Let's just pick one member of buying team and his customer experience. Brocade's a customer of ours, and this is a pretty typical product page where you can see there are some benefits here, and you can see there's some videos available. It's, but it's kind of hard for the customer to tell what to do next. We've been talking about another way to do this. The hottest topic, or one of the, the one of the hot topics out there right now are chatbots and conversational user interfaces. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg says that within a year or two, most Facebook interactions between businesses and their customers will be mediated by chatbots. And it's been announced that the underlying design of Windows will be conversation as a platform. I'm not saying you need to go all in with chatbots, just that you can get more value out of video by thinking like a chatbot and making your videos chatbot ready. So what would that look like? Here's a hypothetical landing page, and let's say the person who landed on it is that guy, and he's interested in DevOps. Now he can see that there's three short videos available, and he's not going to have to make much of a time commitment in order to look at the one he's interested in. So he picks that, and here's the video. Let's the Brocade SLX 9850 uses the server-based Brocade Workflow Composer automation platform to automate all phases of the network management lifecycle, including provisioning a device or service, validating the configuration, troubleshooting issues, and remediating problems to ensure SLAs are met. Maybe this guy wants to know more and he wants to know it right now. So here's our fake chatbot right inside the video window, and in fact, that's what interactive video is, or at least it can make a fake chatbot because it's basically just clickable objects overlaid on video with HTML5 to make it responsive like a chatbot. This is not artificial intelligence, but it's pretty smart. Interactive video isn't new. E-learning apps have had this capability for years, but now it's scalable and it's easy and you can do it with any video. So our guy wants a little more information and he can get it this is just a diagram right out of the, um, the product information. It wasn't hard to put in there. Uh, he could spend as much time as he wants on it, and when he's done, he's done. And since the chatbot knows that he was interested in, uh, in DevOps, um, the chatbot can offer another option, or our interactive video can act offer another option. And our user is going to hope it's not going to go on too long, but he'll watch it anyway. And lo and behold, it's been chapterized. I think this is a really important thing to do with long form videos because, well, it's really responsive. It makes for a much better customer experience. The person can click on the stuff that interests them. So what we've done here is we've used editorial agility to pull together a lot of different excerpts of video in order to deliver a good customer experience. So how are we going to increase the value of video content? Well, I've, I've noted five different ways. There are lots of others. They're all responsive, and they're all designed to make your customer feel smarter after watching them. We've got a few minutes, and um, we could take a question or two. Here's one that has to do with planning. How much should a person budget for an explainer video? If you look online, you can see people advertising explainer videos for $500 or less. That's not much more than we pay for voiceover narration. Um, you're probably going to spend upwards of $5,000. Um, I would say you should probably, if you budget $9,000 and try to get it for less, you'll be in pretty good shape. Here's another one that has to do with planning. Can you give some advice as to the timeline that's required for producing a video from start to finish? Huh. Well, um, I mentioned the in the in the budget number. You know, you've got X number of hours, say maybe between fifty and a hundred hours of work on the part of um, uh, us or your supplier to make a, a two-minute video. Um, but that can be pretty well compressed. What usually takes a lot of time is um, 
our client who needs to get approvals or people are on vacation or they've uh, they're traveling and they don't have time to uh, provide feedback and we have a lot of feedback cycles in our production process anyway we usually allow we tell people six weeks we can do it faster but um, uh, six weeks is a good time to allow because it gives you time to uh, rethink um, and it gives everybody time to chime in and um, provide uh, feedback. Uh, here's one that asks, how do I measure the effectiveness of my video? And yeah, well, um, most of our videos are for um, pretty big ticket items and so it's not like a, a piece of sporting equipment where you show somebody a video and they say, well I want one of those. Um, so e conversions is a, a, a metric that you often see that and, and it can be measured in like, well, do people download a, a white paper or a free trial of the software? And that's pretty good. And that's usually in the call to action. The great thing about interactive video, uh, let's say you've got a, a five minute video and there are 10 things to click on. That's 10 data points that are, are going to tell you something about the user, what the user is interested in, um, and what uh, that person wants to do next. So that's a interactive video is a great way to collect data. Our time's about up, and uh, I hope that uh, this was worthwhile for you. And if you have quite other questions, please do contact us by email or through our website. And we'll look forward to talking with you. Bye-bye.